Hola. Bonjour. Ni hao. Moi. Privet. Guten Tag. Hey. Uh, shalom. I've got a new one. I've got a new one. Hoffa day. That is from Guam. I was doing a cameo calls earlier this week and BB gave me that one. So a big hello to everyone over there in Guam right now. Yes, hello. And everybody, welcome to Normal Not Normal. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. You need to do one more. You can't just get away with not saying another one. Um, oh. Um, without, without looking it up. I'm not looking it up. Uh, oh, hi, Zaymas. Whatever way you want to say it. Hello. Welcome to the Normal Not Normal podcast with me, Oliver Phelps. And me, James Phelps. And guys, thank you for joining us this week. And thank you as well for the amazing reaction and response that we've had to our first two shows of this series. We've been absolutely blown away. So thank you very much for getting in touch with us. Thank you for all your very nice comments on iTunes and Spotify and YouTube and all that kind of stuff. We cannot thank you enough. Slam dunk, are you ready to make me? Exactly. So, yes, we just want to say, well, I want to repeat what James has said. Thanks for all the love and support, guys. It's been absolutely amazing just to hear just a response from everybody like that. And we were very, very proud as well. I was especially uh, to see that we were on the holding page for the iTunes podcast list, both on this side of the Atlantic and on the other side as well. So if you came across the podcast that way, hello, welcome. Good to have you here. It is. It is. So. As you may be aware or not, we recorded a couple of these shows a couple of weeks ago. So the one that we're going to play today is the one that we did with Mercedes, aka Sasha Banks. And we had such a great chat with her, so we're very, very excited. But if we don't talk about things which have happened since, this is why. It is exactly why. And even if you're not into wrestling, the one thing I would say is that the one thing that we've learned from chatting with Mercedes is just how... You've got to be persistent to achieve your goals. It's such an inspiring story speaking to Mercedes. We had a great, great time doing it. And also learning about her, her what's, that, what's, that, what's, that, what's that really low budget program she's now in, James? What's that thing on that oh, really obscure man, channel? Man, um, it's on some, man, some uh, really weird, yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember it. The Mandalorian on Disney Plus. Home streaming service. Check it out. I would thoroughly recommend it. It's an amazing show. Really good binge watching show. Oh, there you go. There you go. So anyway, as I say, Mercedes is in that as well. So she talks about that as well. It's not every day you get to speak to a world champion. No, it's not. And what was really cool is that when Mercedes came on, we also got speaking about how she got into the wrestling business, how she got to meet her now husband, who we actually get to speak to as well. Their amazing charity work that they're doing. And we just had a great talk. What you probably also need to know is that Oliver and I are quite big wrestling fans, have been since we were kids. Uh, we're very lucky to have been to a couple of WrestleManias and really enjoy it. So it was really cool to speak to someone about their craft and also talking about how she takes from playing a character in the wrestling world to playing a character in acting for the sake of the Mandalorian. So that was very interesting to hear how she gets into character, whether it's the same or, or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And just to remind you, the reason why you won't hear us talking about the Snoop Splash, because Snoop Dogg is actually Mercedes' cousin, which you probably know already. But with that in mind, because it's already out there, all that news and stuff like that, we thought we'll talk about Mercedes, about what she's up to. Uh, that was one of our angles on this interview because we want it to be about her. Obviously, it's great having a really cool, successful cousin like that and you should always embrace your family. But we wanted this one to be about her. I think, yeah, definitely, because I'm, I'm pretty sure that every interview that she's ever done, someone has to refer to about Snoop Dogg. And we didn't want that because, I mean, when I do interviews, I don't want to talk about my brother. So no, <laughs> so even when I'm there. Even when I'm there. Especially when you're there. Oh. So we thought it would be great to, again, understand what her normal is. So after... Well, we'll get to more about the interview soon. It's coming up. But James, tell me this week, what have you been up to? So I got myself a turbo trainer, which is a turbo trainer, which is basically a nice way of saying it's an attachment for the back end of your bike. Yeah, I take my back. I've taken turbo my back trainer makes it sound like you're powering a house. What was that? Snail? Wasn't there a snail called turbo? Anyway, that's um, so I, I was uh, I decided that I missed riding my bike so much outdoors because it's very cold here at the moment and i don't really like riding when there's 
dark nights it's very slippy and oh actually actually if there's anybody who rides their bike outside in the snow please message james to tell him why he needs to do that because oh, yeah. i've been inundated from people from cold country saying oh oliver it's really good for you to go out for a run where have you done it then? cold no i've got a spin bike in my house which i've been using every day and i've actually been really enjoying it myself however right the one thing i would say oh, I thought, okay you set you set me up now so I've been using this very, very, I've been, I've been using this very, very cool system, uh, which is like a streaming service for exercise. And they've got loads of different, it's a very well-known brand. Uh, and there's lots of cool Which things brand? on it. You can do like yoga, you can do Pilates, you can do strength conditioning. There's high oh, that brand. training. Right, okay. um, and there's also a really good cycling thing on there as well with literally thousands of on-demand classes to do, which I've been really enjoying. And the music is really cool on it. Some great artists on there as well to listen to. And some of the instructors, I've got to be honest, are absolutely unbelievably good. The music's awesome. Really get into it, get your heartbeat going, really enjoy it. But there's two who I've come across who are just, you know, when you just within five minutes of doing something, you think, right, you're really irritating me now. Right. There's this one lady who does it. And I swear, right, I thought, OK, metal music. I like listening to metal music. OK, I'll listen to that. OK, da, da, da. listening to it. OK. No, sorry. Tell a live man. There's this one lady. Right. And I'm watching her do it. And I'm thinking to myself, OK, cool. OK, I like that type of that genre of music. OK, 90s rock music. Yeah. OK, let's do that one going along. So Rage Against the Machine comes on. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. She talks over the whole bloody song saying what an amazing cover band did this song in a different melody. And I'm thinking if I wanted to listen to that, I'd listen to that. But no, I don't. I want to listen to this while I work out. And then I look and she's not even riding. She's literally stood there on the bike, not doing anything what you're doing as well. And then you're thinking, why am I bothering? Why am I bothering? Stop talking as well, because all she does is talk, 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 talk. And then I watched another one, right? The other day. So I, I've, I've skipped that one instructor. I don't, I don't bother with her. Put on this other one because I thought, oh, great. I love this artist who they're talking about now. Who the, who the, whole, the whole ride's dedicated to this one artist. Love, love all of his music and everything like that. And this lady starts doing it. And similar thing. Doesn't stop talking. Tell us all about the first time she ever listened to this record. The first place she's ever seen him live. Seen him live like 40 odd times or something like that. You know, you're just like, you're not even cycling now. You're talking about going to a gig. That is not going to help me get through. But as I say... Some of the other guys on there are absolutely out of this world. Like they're just absolutely amazing how they do their stuff. So one thing I've learned from this new lockdown, I suppose we're in right now, is that when you're on a spin class or anything like that, if it's not working after five minutes and you find yourself getting more angry with the person who you're supposed to be working out with, find another one. So does this mean you're going to be riding your bike after this is all said and done? Uh, no. Well, maybe, maybe, but not come in, So, so not will you come riding with me? Get a nice... No. Oh, come on. Why would, I, why would I want to do that? When I, if, I, look, if I'm going to go outside on the bike, I want to be on a, like a nice little cruiser. Just go along at my own little pace, little basket on the front. Just go along and do my own thing. Or even better, if I'm going to go out and it's a sunny day, what would I rather do? I'd rather go out in my Morgan with the roof down, picnic basket on the back and find a nice country lane and just go driving. That would be my idea of a lovely, lovely day. Okay. Anyway, you and your turbo thing. trainer. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that. So yes. since I, uh, yeah, so I don't enjoy uh, riding in the winter time so much. So I decided to get this turbo trainer where you take the back wheel off of your real, of your own bike, attach it to it, sync it up to a, a couple of apps, which have, have all different maps on. So you're essentially riding up hills and all that kind of, and you actually see it. So it's a lot more like riding on the road. And so I've been doing that every evening, which has been really good. Although I need to get a fan because it gets very steamy in this room. So I've, I've, uh, I did one this morning, so I had to open the Air conditioner. A fan deep. won't do it. An air conditioner is what you need. Right, okay. Or just Mo open the door or a window. Moving on, because I, I find it hard to take fitness tips from you. Why? <laughs> how, many, how many triathlons have you ever done? How many ones have you done? One, but one more than you. Anyway, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so going on about everything what we've been going on to this week, what else have you been doing? It can't just have been fitness going on your turbo trainer so i've been looking at some really cool messages that we've been had coming in from people i've really enjoyed hearing everyone's comments what they've said and they've all been very nice we've got hundreds of five star reviews on itunes which is amazing but i also want to thank island am for having us on saturday morning we had a great chat 
and it was just really nice to share the podcast world. So everyone that's listening from Ireland, welcome to the journey. We hope you enjoy it as well. And thank you very much for everybody on the show for making us feel so welcome. Yes, I can only echo, 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 echo. Bad joke there. What James just said about that, it was really, really good to be able to, uh, to get on there. So as, as James said, if you are listening from Ireland after watching our interview there, hello, welcome. Very much. But shall we crack on with today's guest? I think we can do, James. Have you ever spoken to a current world women's champion in the, let's face it, the biggest wrestling organization on the planet right now? No, I haven't, especially uh, speaking to her after she'd won the amazing match at the Hell in the Cell, which is now available on the WWE Network. But everybody around the world knows her as Sasha Banks. However, this being one of her first ever interviews she did out of character, so we know her as Mercedes Bernardo. Thank you very much for joining us today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Harry. You are. Very good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Um, first of all, Mercedes being your real name, is it still, like, do you answer to both Mercedes and Sasha, or do you kind of leave Sasha at, the, at work? Um, it's different. This is like almost my first interview uh kind of as mercedes so I, I i guess mercedes i think um uh, i'm more used to it now before i almost had like a problem where i was being kind of sasha banks kind of 24 7 of my life i felt like the pressure of being it all the time and i was like you know what that's not your real name first of all and that's not you uh your name is mercedes <laughs> so that's who you are so be yourself <laughs> sasha banks is just a character i play on wwe and I'm, i i you know, she is the boss. She is awesome. But Mercedes is awesome, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, cool. I mean, I was, I was going to ask as well. Like, So are you encouraged by the WWE to stay in character or anything like that? Or is it more like a case of where, well, I suppose well, in, like, in an era of social media where companies like are revealing more behind the curtain, as it were, that you can break the traditional kayfabe? Or is it, as you say, like, be like today yeah. being the first time? I, I feel like it's just kind of something that's not even talked about. I feel... Um, you know, when you get into the WWE, you're so excited and you're so excited to play a character because it is um, a place where you kind of almost play a role 24 seven. So even our Instagrams and our Twitters are kind of our character names, but we are the ones that are playing these roles uh, and we're not sometimes our characters. I mean, Bray Wyatt, the fiend, can't be that all the time. Can you imagine if you saw him as the fiend just driving by? Like, oh my, like that is not... You, know, you have to know, right? So we're, <laughs> we're, we're real human too, and we're playing characters. So um, I don't think it's encouraged sometimes. Um, sometimes with, like Twitter and stuff, sometimes they'll let us know like, hey, can you send out a tweet to promote the storyline or this or that? Um, but I feel like a lot of times you're seeing more of who we really are on our off days and like what we're doing now, thanks to social media as well. So you get to know about us in both worlds. <laughs> Sure, sure. So, so in this podcast, we're basically trying to explore what the word normal and celebrating mm -hmm. what's what makes us all different uh, in our own way. But basically saying that, you know, is does the idea of normal even exist? So like our, our childhood was fairly unusual growing up on the set of of the Potter films. Um, but yours is pretty different, too. I mean, you started wrestling very early on. Like what was it? Yeah. What was it that sparked that interest in wanting to uh, get into the first training lessons? Man, I started uh, watching wrestling when I was 10 years old and I just instantly knew like that's what I wanted to be. You know, kids want to be superheroes. They want to be firefighters. They want to be lawyers, doctors, whatever. But I was like, whoa, I want to do that. I want to throw my body around. I want to slam and, you know, say words and say, oh, hell yeah, and have people watch me from all over the world and I want fans screaming my name. Um, and I just had that just instant dream. Like a, a light just came into my soul and every single day was just like, my dream was wrestling, 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 wrestling. I walked down the street, I'm thinking wrestling. I'm done with school. I'm going to the library, watching more wrestling, like just finding everything about wrestling. And then I turned 18 and I went to a wrestling school and I started training and I, I messaged WWE. I kept sending emails being like, can I get a tryout? Can I get a tryout? Can I get a tryout? Because WWE is the, the number one company in the world. It's the sure. biggest, biggest wrestling organization in the world. It is, you got WWE, you got NBA, you got NFL. Like we are 
the biggest. This is what everyone watches on TV. WWE is number one. And they gave me a tryout and they gave me several tryouts because they said, well, nah, mm, whatever. <laughs> then finally, they sent me down to Tampa for a week long tryout. And I was like, you know what? I cannot leave this place until I get signed. I, yeah. I have to be the best. I have to be better than everybody. Yeah. And I got signed. And, you and now here I am. <laughs> the best. Yeah. So when, it's so I, cool. When you started, <laughs> so when you started uh, learning, like we, were, were your friends doing it with you, or, or what? If they weren't, what did they think when you told them? I had no, uh, no friends growing up. Okay, I had no friends. Um, I started going to online school when I was thirteen, twelve mm. or thirteen, and I had no interaction with people, nothing. And I started wa watching wrestling at ten, and I was just kind of nervous as a, a woman telling people that I liked it. You know, I had like, you know, WWE notebooks and people be like, hey, I, I like that. But I never really wanted to engage in conversation. Um, you know, we would we engage a little bit, but not a lot because no one wanted to do it like me. No one wanted to be a wrestler like me. Nobody wanted to, you know, slam around, throw it down. Um, you know, I had to run home every single day. I couldn't play with kids after school because I just wanted to watch wrestling. I wanted, I couldn't wait. I was like sitting at the TV with excitement. Um, so I couldn't wait to just train and learn to be the, the best. It was just like, I just, I didn't have any friends to tell about. I just had myself and my brother mm -hmm. and that was it. So what did you, yeah. like, so, so what, okay. And so what did your, your brother and your mom say then when you, you, you told them <laughs> you were doing that or was that later down the line after you started learning? Um, no, I told my mom, I told my mom right away. I was like, I think I want to do this. And she was like. She was being so dramatic, like my mom always does. She's like, oh, oh my God, what did I do? Why? Why would you why would you do this? Like, what? Like, this is insane. Why would you like something like this? This is not what girls do. And I was like, I don't care what you tell me. I'm going to do it. Because, you know, back in the day when we would watch together, the women weren't really wrestling like the men. They were treated differently. They were just treated as, like, sex symbols and you know, there would be women that could wrestle and they were given opportunity, but they weren't given the same opportunity as the men. They weren't respected. They weren't, you know, and, and it wasn't like they weren't, they shouldn't have, they should have been respected, mm, but yeah. they weren't given respect. Um, but now not only are we respected and we are given respect, we are taking over. So it's so cool to see because my mom was seeing that and she was thinking that I'm, about to do a bra and panty match or yeah i was, I was, I was gonna say the, the days of like a yeah so a bra bra and panty match are a long way from yeah. where, where you guys are are doing these days but i mean J J james and i are, are massive wrestling fans but some of the guys listening now may not be too down to down to uh the actual terminologies and stuff like that so how would you best describe it in a nutshell if you had like one nutshell to describe wrestling how, how would it be how does it how does, how does it work and stuff like it that it is so undescribable it is a, a a big, big last of a circus. I would say it is. Yep. It's theater. It's it's acting. It's it's stunt work. It's it's drama. It's alive. It's like S and L on on crack. It's it's yeah. crazy. It is <laughs> yeah. nonstop because it is so exciting. I think I just get a thrill off of the anxiety I get because of how insane. Um, professional wrestling is and the thrill you get off of it because it's such an insane sport yet it's in the entertainment mm -hmm. yeah. because we have to work together to make sure that we really don't hurt each other mm. but these moves really do hurt yeah i was gonna say because you, you can't really fake being thrown off even just like from say the turnbuckle onto a map but let alone if you're going onto the floor below or in the parking lot or anything like that you can't exactly fake gravity. you can't fake it you cannot fake it but you know, it's it's like an art of itself. It's kind of like its own martial art because you have to learn how to fall and roll and to protect yourself and hit things in a certain way. So you are walking every single day. It's a, it's such a beautiful art. But while you're doing that, you have to have facial, you know, structures. You have to think and hear the fans because they will make you change your mind in an instant. You have to have eye contact with your opponent and you can have more than one. You, it might not be a one-on-one -on -one match. It could be a tag match. It could be a three-way. It could be a four-way. It can be inside of a cage. It can be inside of 
anything. Wrestling is so crazy. You can you can have a ladder. You can go through a table. <laughs> it is it's so crazy. It's such a thrill of an excitement and it's so undescribable. You just have to watch it because it's almost everything. Yeah. It's everything. You will find everything, every different little entertainment. If you don't like one thing, we have something for you over here. If you don't like that thing, we have something over here. Like just keep watching because we have something for everything. And I think that's what's so special with WWE that it connects to people all over the world. It is so unique. We are aired all over the world and, and we feel the energy. Like we get to travel all the world before, you know, the pandemic. And, you know, we would travel to all these different places and people from all different places would just want to watch because it's so True. different and so unique. And um, it's just a last of a, a kind of just like a, hey, bring, bring your bring your family to come see this crazy, crazy excitement because you never know what's going to happen. And it's so, so cool. Like I was, was, was going to say, say that when, whenever I do, like anyone that's done theater is, there's always a great thing when you do the scene perfectly and it goes exactly right. Yes. But also for performer, it's also quite exciting when it goes wrong and you need to still end up at the final result. I guess exactly. that kind of thing happens with you and how do you other guys you're working exactly. with that. Exactly. And like you say, how- just looking at the eyes thinking, how are we going to get around this one? Exactly. And you're like, oh, do I show that I'm scared and nervous and I don't know what to do? <laughs> or do I have it together because I've been doing this for that long and I should? Or is, you know, so many things go through your head and you only have a second. Mm-hmm. Isn't it incredible how the mind works? Yeah. You know, you mess up like this and the mind goes up. Oh. It gives you so many different things. And you're like, OK, but which one do I do? Which one is perfect? Let's try it. Let's see. Oh, it's working. It's going. We got back to where we want to go. And it's <laughs> it's just it's so incredible. The power of your mind. Um, and it's so awesome. The same thing with theater and, and wrestling. If, if things go wrong, you have to work on your craft to make mm. sure that you not only are you good, because if, if you're off, you, you can mess up the whole train. Mm-hmm. Sure. You can mess sure. up the whole train. You can mess up the whole match. You can mess up the whole excitement and everything's so the thrill for the fans. It's the, the excitement for you. And if we're not giving you that, ah, uh, if we don't feel it back, then we didn't do a good job. So it, it's actually really, really cool when things don't go perfectly because sometimes it's not meant to. Yeah. No. Sometimes no, no, no. you hear something from an audience and it's they don't like that and you want to change it to what they like because you need to feel, you need to go off that energy. And it's it's probably like the best part. So I, I like not even saying or, or like almost planning things and just letting things flow. Mm-hmm. Sure, no, that's cool. So, I mean, because I've noticed as well that it's like it's, it's one of the few times that I've been to see, when I've, when I, when I've been to see uh, the WWE Live is that it's the one time that you can either go with, say, your family or you could mm-hmm. go with with your mates and have a couple of drinks beforehand. Like it's it's amazing how you can, and normally you don't the two don't mesh together, but both exactly. is intertwined. I think as long as you you almost like need need to leave your self awareness at the door really because when you get in you need to be invested in what the what were you guys are doing like the goodie comes out the baddie comes out and stuff like that. Exactly, it, it, it's it's like a really I feel like a chance for you to escape where yeah. you can almost if you don't if you had a rough day if you want to let loose this is a place where you're going to have fun you're going to scream you're going to cheer you're going to get invested because like Mm. i said it's a place for everybody and there's somebody there's there's something and everything for somebody um and it's so cool to see children to adults to teens to grandmas Mm -hmm. it's just that the history of it all and they're all cheering together and screaming together and booing together and it's the excitement of energy of just everyone's watching the same thing and the reaction. It's just like, wow. Yeah. Because everyone could connect. It's not like it's no, there's nothing too crazy for kids besides, you know, a couple of chair shots. But we're letting you know, please do not try that. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah, not try that. that. But does that, do, do, do people never do that? Because I remember we used to have a beanbag when we were growing up. And that thing got... <laughs> pounded weekly because it would be either a power bomb or something like that so as, as much as like you guys say well uh, then you know what you got that's up to your mom that's she better give you a little that's spanking that's not up to me i can't go no, to no, each no, house and give you a little spank <laughs> i'm letting you know right now please do not try this at home unless you want to be a wrestler please you know seek professional to your training before you try anything it's Yes, it's here, a here. crazy world. <laughs> sure, sure. So has has playing uh, the character, like, again, playing Sasha Banks and other characters that you played before that, has that did that help you with your own personal confidence or have you always oh been an gosh. outgoing person? No, 
I have never been so outgoing. Um, it's all due to Sasha Banks. And I'm so, so thankful um, for her. And because of Sasha Banks, it helped me really find myself because I took some of her traits of something that I always wanted to be. I always wanted to be super outgoing and super loud and super like, hey, I'm one in the room because I was super shy growing up because I have a brother with autism. Um, and he just you know, he gave me public humiliation every single day. So I was just like a, a turtle, a turtle, turtle, turtle. So once I found wrestling and once I found that, hey, I don't have to be this turtle anymore. Here, let me take off my shell. Now let me put on a new shell and let me be a character and realize, wait, it doesn't have to be a character. It could be me. Mm-hmm. It's, it became such like a, an easier thing to do because it's just like growth. It's so cool to start with WWE as Sasha Banks and you see the growth of her from being really shy and, you know, being kind of who Mercedes was um, to being like, but Mercedes, you're, you've put a lot of work in, you put in years of dedication. It wasn't just training in the ring. You put in your time and knowledge and skill to watching so much hours, hours, hours and hours of wrestling. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's funny that you, well, that's really interesting you said that because to be honest, that's exactly what happened to me because uh, before I played Freddie and Harry Potter, I was very much happy to be one of the crowd at the back of the room kind of, in, but the character is very outgoing. Um, I hope you, well, I don't think you've ever you seen know, Potter. You know Harry, that right? though, don't you? You know that though, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I make I made her. Made I made her, her yeah. outgoing. <laughs> so it's it's uh it's funny that it's when you do something so much it kind of rubs off on your own person. Yeah, it does and it's 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 exciting, it's awesome and it's cool to know that you know every day you can change and you can be whoever you want to be. If you are shy and nervous, every single second you have that difference and you have that time to change. Mm-hmm. It takes one little let me just try it. Oh, let me bring a fear. Okay. That was not that hard. That's, I don't have to be shy. That that's awesome. You just, there's, you have to try that every single day and keep on trying because that's what I did. I was, I couldn't not even speak. I couldn't even speak. I couldn't even say hi to people. And now here I am. I speak to millions all over the world yeah. every single week on live national television. International, um, international television. I- international. Don't sell yourself short. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Um, so it's incredible. Just keep on working on it every single day because sometimes I still go into, you know, my old self of being shy and nervous for sometimes. Um, mm. But I don't know. That's just, that's life. It's, it's okay to be you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And in terms of like actually going to that like being learning that, that character to begin with so when you're doing the the stuff in in like nxt when they they do like the whole sessions and like on the mic skills and stuff like that is that how it's perceived well my, my perception of it from looking outside of looking in where they literally get you in front of a load of people give you a mic and say right spit a promo is it literally like that it is it is sink or swim it, it, it is a last of a dying art it is so crazy if you want to get a thrill in life if you want to get the most oh my god what is going to happen boom all eyes are new you have to come to WWE because they will push you out there when you are not ready but it's up to you it's up to you to put in the work it's up to you to be like all right here is my chance and opportunity because we we are the ones that hold the keys to our, our success it's like you know a long time it was always about the guys, the guys, the guys, the guys. And I yeah. always wanted to be bigger than the guys. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. cool to see that now I am. It's like, no matter what they try to do or, or how they will try to push people, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm the best. So yeah, keep on yeah. trying. <laughs> yeah, well, I was, was going to say like back in um, 2016, so James and I had to go to Universal Studios Hollywood uh, for the opening of the Wisdom World of Harry Potter. Good um, name drop. Yep good name <laughs> I've, I've, I've learned right now to say it properly it's not harry potter land it's wizarding world of Harry Potter, a universal studios anyway um but beforehand we were able to fly out a couple of days earlier and we went over to dallas uh, to watch wrestlemania um that which is was so just cool insane um now i'm not just saying it because you're our, our guest today uh, but your match blew the house down like it was oh, considering there was that many people there and the crowd were really into it and you've got when you i can only imagine what it's like to have over a hundred thousand people literally bouncing with excitement at what's going on in the ring. And the fact that it's on top of that, you know, it's obviously it was a momentous match 
for the women's division because it stopped exactly. being called divas. It was back to being women. And Super they were like, obviously, yes. you know, and, and you guys were doing stuff what the men were doing. It wasn't, as you say, it wasn't like grabbing the hair and rubbing it around. It was literally, you know, like just insane moves going on. But before, like, so when you're in the gorilla position waiting to come out and you're waiting for your music to play, are you thinking, my God, this is a big moment? Or are you just thinking, I can't wait for this. I can't wait to get out and blow everyone away. Oh, my God. I am thinking everything. I'm thinking all of those things. But most of all, I'm screaming um, because I have, I, I usually get the biggest anxiety attacks, and especially back then. Yeah. It just It's Wrestle freaking Mania, and it's my first one. And not only that, I have <laughs> Snoop Dogg in Gorilla with me right. about to go out and do my entrance to sing it. Okay, yeah, so yeah. so you're making me go back into it. I was not even just <laughs> thinking of, oh my god, all eyes on me. This is a huge opportunity. It was it was everything because for me, back then wrestling was my do or die in everything, and I wanted to prove a point every single time I went out there that I was the greatest, mm. and I wanted people to talk about the women's match and be the, the the stiller. Like I wanted to always steal the show. I always wanted people to talk about us because. It was still like so new back then. Yeah. Like, women weren't given that opportunity. And if, if a woman ever dreamt of dreaming about stealing the show, <laughs> you were, no, let me just take that dream right now and right. throw it out the window because let me not even put you on the card. Women won't, wouldn't even used to have WrestleMania matches, period. No. They would not no. even have matches. If, if they're running too, like, too long on the show, they would be the first one pulled off the card, the women. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is now, great. Here, that's not that's not and that's not even that long ago. And it's not ago, the case. Yeah, it's it's not even that long ago. It's mm. not even that long ago. And here I am, given maybe twenty five minutes at yeah. Wrestle Freaking Mania, wrestling Charlotte Flair and having Rick like oh my god, yeah, Becky yeah. Lynch, the girls that I train with, and we came from nothing to having a hundred thousand fans screaming our names. And I walked through the curtain. I was like. All right, let's do it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. <laughs> and it was crazy. And then once I got back, that's when I cried like a baby. And just like, I I don't even know. If I, like, I was just like scared. I hope I did good. I was right. just so nervous like that. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to do so good. And because I used to be so hard on myself after matches. I used to mm. be so hard. But I didn't even realize like, wow, how big that was. Because it was so it was so big for the women back then. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it was, yeah, honestly, that was, it was amazing. We had such, and everyone was talking about your match after. So, thank you. That's so cool. And I can't get over you. You look like CM Punk. Oh, thank you. I think. Do they ever tell you, do you look like CM Punk? <laughs> I haven't been told that before, but I'll take it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was told, during lockdown, I had don't a bit of a beard, and I was Don't told I looked more like, during lockdown, I had a bit of a beard, and I was told I looked more like Forrest Gump when he went for a run for a couple <laughs> of years. So, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh! Yes. Uh, so, uh, like you say, you've you've gone from um, that WrestleMania to a lot of other things, and then more recently, can we talk about the Mandalorian? And that was uh, again an amazing thing to do. So, how did that all come around? And can I ask you, ask on a acting side of thing, is your preparation getting into another character like that the same as getting into Sasha Banks, or if, are you able just to switch back and forth? Oh, man, it was for real so hard for me because I was just so freaking nervous. I could not believe um, when I got the call to be asked to be part of the Mandalorian Star Wars from Jon Favreau himself. I was like, wait, what? Did you believe that? Do you believe it was him on the phone when he called or was it? <laughs> I was I was like I was driving somewhere and my manager called me and I had no makeup on. I think I was going to the beach or something. I was like, it's an off day, finally. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I used to not have off days. We this I, pandemic, oh my god, yeah. I only had one day off. So I am full of joy. I want to throw my phone out the window. I don't even want to answer it. He calls me up, he's like, John Favreau wants to FaceTime you. Do you got time? I'm like, uh, uh okay. <laughs> Ran home because yeah. make it fun. I was like, hi. And he he asked me, um, he told me about the Mandalorian. He told me about the story. And I was like, wow, this is, is this for real? This is incredible. Oh my God, this is incredible. And it's something I, I would love to be a part of. And I didn't even know if I could have because of WWE and the schedule. Um, 
but he saw me on hot ones and he was a he just instantly just really really liked me and said that he wanted to write a role for me in the mandalorian so no matter what he would you know try to get me on hmm. um so for me i just i i wanted to do really good because i even said I'm like should i get acting classes like i don't know what to do i'm like ah! and he's like you do you every single yeah. week on live national television what are you talking about and i'm like you know what? you're right because what i do is acting as well i i get a script every single week and i gotta remember like bam mm-hmm. because mm. in wwe again that's how exciting it is our boss is so so legendary and crazy and iconic but again crazy <laughs> that he will change things in an instant and right. maybe he won't even give you a script and just push you out there but he will change a script on you in 30 seconds or in a heartbeat lesser than that yeah. and you just have to pull it together so i have to be like you know what you are absolutely right i forget sometimes who i am yeah i can hold it together i can do this i'm like oh, okay i'll try it so it was really really up to me i just kept on practicing you know over and over and over and over and it's not like i had many lines but i wanted to make sure i understood the character and the meaning and the facial expressions and what i wanted to bring to the table because man i was working with the best mm-hmm. i worked with sure. the greatest um katie sackoff did you not see her as bo katan oh my god she is so amazing i was so thankful to have her there because she taught me so much and bryce howard uh, they just taught me so much and i was so thankful for them to like be there for my first thing ever and my first thing to be star wars i it's I a pretty cool thing to start it. off with as well isn't it especially like i mean you think like that Ow. thing you think like mandalorian yes. as well was basically what what brought the disney plus like right. what basically started it off really so to be on part i'm of, still you, like you, pinching I mean, myself it's their, flagship, like, it's their flagship stuff it is like i was in the trailer i'm on the cover of this like what i'm like how is this possible how is this all real i'm just so incredibly blessed and the episode just came out so amazing mm-hmm. like it's still talked about and I, it makes me so excited to watch it like i'm just i cannot wait for the story because Disney is so secretive, I don't even know what's going on. I was going to say, do, you, do they go. give you like a, this is what's going to happen, is that you've got to wait the, until I next week. I don't know nothing. <laughs> I am following just like you. I have to actually watch, like rewatch my episode because I had, I watched it early in the morning with my family and then I had to go to work, I had to do interviewers, like interviews. Hmm. And I didn't get to take everything in because I was just screaming, watching it, and like looking at my family, looking at the TV, and thinking like, "Is this real? like, is this life? Am I waking up? Is this how? How is this all possible?" So it's so cool, and I'm just so thankful because how how magical is Disney to keep it like everything just so tight knit that hmm. it's like one of the last thing things too, like like wrestling, like you want to you want to like stay tuned every single week to see what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. Hmm. Mm, yeah definitely that's great to see. But so, so like over the years as well like you've become and i suppose it's going to go more so as well going into the acting side of it as well but like over the years you've become a role model to millions of people especially young girls like how does that how does that make you feel and does it ever come into your conscious when you're asking answering questions or you're in, out in public like how you behave because i know for me sometimes i'm watching can i do that because there's someone around or does that does, it, does that ever come to your psyche or is it just something you absolutely you get on with all the time and it's super hard for me as well because um before for me like again i i dealt with a lot of anxiety um and i have blue hair <laughs> and i am easily spotted so yeah. i cannot just deny myself um and i get really nervous when people are around me because you never know with people people are sometimes scary and you know, fans can sometimes be overbearing. Um, so it's hard, but it's it's so cool to also know that you are a role model to these people. Like, I make a difference to yeah. these people that I meet, and I bring a joy in their life. And sometimes I don't even know that until they tell me, or or you feel that connection, or you, you understand, like, why do I put a spell on your face? You know, why? Because I see my daughter, and my what my daughter, it's like, it's just, it's just so cool to see what, because of what I loved sure. as a kid, because of, of my dream and because of my craft of what I, I wanted my dream to be, that it it p- brings a joy to people's faces. And now I'm a role model to them. It, yeah. uh, it's also very nerve wracking because I'm like, whoa, 
that doesn't mean I'm super <laughs> responsible for you guys. You have to make your own decisions. You have to do everything yourself. I can't, I can, I can only be myself mm. and I can only do the best for myself. And that's only what I want for myself is to live life, you know, and, and to serve life to the best of my ability and sure. keep on growing and keep on being the best. Um, and if people see that and they can take a little bit of that, then that's up to them. Um, so I, it's hard for me to be like, yes, I'm a role model. Let me say all the right things because every day I'm learning as well. And every day I'm growing, um, but we're all growing together. So why not just do it with love and respect with the community? So I have to also be aware of that too, when I say things, because I'm very, like, I'm a very positive person. So I try mm. not to even be negative or yeah, put anything yeah. negative yeah. out there because I just feel like it's better to have more positive energy in this universe and especially right now. So bring more community and bring more love and, you know, be a role model for, for yourself and exactly, for people yeah. around you. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, she, I, I know you, you've opened up um, earlier on, earlier on in the interview, you mentioned about your brother uh, being autistic and, and, yeah. and like, it sounds like that, that obviously, meant that you had to move around a bit to deal with all that type of it. So could you tell us how that affected in any way your life growing up? Because obviously siblings sometimes bear the brunt of, of these things and we don't hear from them often enough. But on the flip side of that, what did you learn from him? And, you know, how is uh, how that, as you say, like watching, watching wrestling together and stuff like that? I learned so much from him. I learned um, the patience of life um, and that life is so special and that I am so incredibly blessed um, just to be my own being uh, because he has to deal with a lot mm. harder things because of his disabilities. But he also has way more abilities than I have and could ever have. And he is uh, so incredible and brings such a joy to not only myself, but to many others because of his personality and how he is and how uh, <laughs> he's just, it's, it, there's nothing how to describe him, but just call him Joshua. And he's like, that's just Joshua. That's Joshua. Um, and just so awesome. He's, he's taught me so, so much, but it was so incredibly hard growing up with him because autism is just really not spoken about no. often. No. And not only does he have autism, he has many other different things as well. And it, it was super hard and difficult because there was not a lot of resources. There was not a lot of programs. Or it was really hard to find the right doctors. And, the, and my mom didn't have a job and she was a single parent. Mm. And it was just me and my brother and my mom. Mm. And, um, you know, I had to leave school and I had to take care of him so my mom could get a job so we can stop living in hotels. It was just so incredibly hard for me. So wrestling uh, what brought is what brought me life. It's what brought me joy. It's what brought me passion of like, okay, I'm going to get through this hard time, but one day I'm going to be a wrestler and be the best. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it was my dream. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it gave me a passion and, and watching wrestling with my brother just also gave me a light being like, okay, this is really cool that we can do this together, but wait till you see me on TV one day. I cannot wait to see your eyes and expression. And now he, here I am. And he says, my sister, Sasha Briggs, yeah, Sasha that, Briggs, yeah. Sasha Briggs. And it's, it's so, so, so cool. Um, it's so cool. And he just, he teaches me so much and he's so incredibly special. Um, but I, I feel like people with disabilities, not only, only autism need to be celebrated um, because they're just so uniquely just different. And I think it's so important to understand that everybody is so uniquely different, mm. uh, but to take the time and to be really patient uh, with people that just don't understand and take a longer time to, you know, process things. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to be gentle with one another um, because they're so, so special and can change your lives. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, definitely. really well said. well said. You've also done some amazing charity work. Uh, one thing, one being that when you teamed up with Foot Locker to donate over, let me get this right, 19,000 pairs of trainers, sorry, sneakers. Yes. Sneakers. Sneakers. <laughs> we can call them trainers. To, we can call to, them trainers. To, uh, to people in need. Can you tell us about how that came around and what happened? Yes. And I'm going to actually bring on my husband because he's the one that it's myself and him. Surat! I want him to explain it because he is the best. And I don't want to mess it up. But it's his shoe collaboration as well. So I think it's important. What's oh, yeah. up? So this is Surat. Hey man, how you doing? Cool. Hey, Sarah. What's going on? How are you guys? And we're explaining yeah, about the you. shoe and the collaboration. Okay, so uh, yeah, the shoe uh, came about where we collaborated with Foot Locker in this program called Collaborate. 
And essentially what they're doing is they're going to donate roughly 19,000 sneakers to kids less fortunate, which translates to about $250,000. And uh, yeah, for, you know, during this whole pandemic issue, you have a lot of kids who are less fortunate who aren't able to, you know, going through hard times or aren't able to get new shoes for school. So what we tried to do with the shoe was uh, we did it in collaboration with not only Foot Locker, but one of the store managers from uh, Foot Locker in Detroit, whose name is Marcus Person. So the left shoe actually represents Detroit. So where it says, we are Detroit. Okay. Yep. And then the right shoe is Boston. So that says Boston strong. Yep. Oh, and then nice. the whole... The whole idea is it's a little bit of a, uh, a map through the cities. And when you put them together, it reads, we are strong. So the whole idea is what happens when two opposite things become one. Mm-hmm. And sure. That's the whole idea behind the shoe. Sure. No, <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. That's great. And is that, so, so just to get that right. So that's at Foot Locker out there in the States right now. Yeah, it's at Foot Locker. It's actually super, it's very limited. So very limited. Uh, it's only available at the one store in Detroit and online. There's only about 60 or 70 pairs. So. You get them while they're hot. Right. Not yeah, being yeah. a 13, just out of curiosity. For... Exactly. <laughs> you, can have a th- you can find them. You can make them for, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, yeah. Maybe we'll try to pull some strings. Exactly. So, we'll pull some strings. So you guys, oh, so you guys obviously, so, you're right, you, you, so you guys uh, met at the WWE, right? So... No, we met before WWE. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. We oh. met, well, we met because of wrestling. I started sure. um, training at the place that he worked at called Chaotic Wrestling. He was an independent wrestler. And one day he was walking by when I was talking to another fellow wrestler and I was talking about Korean movies because I love them. And the guy was like, what? And Surat came by and was like, I love Korean movies. I was like, oh, really? That's cool. And I never met anybody who liked Korean movies because I really <laughs> didn't have conversations with anybody. So, and it was really different about me. Um, and we just kind of hit it off and he was so incredible to me and so sweet and, uh, Voila. Yeah. Now here we are. <laughs> he works for the WWE, and it's so cool because, um, like I said before, he was a, a wrestler before too. But he used to make his own costumes when he was in high school, so he can save money and just you know do it mm. on the side. And he used to make my gear. So when we moved down to Florida, I was like, you know what? Just make my gear, make NXT people's gear, you know, whatever. And one day Triple H came to me because my gear is the best look it up sasha banks on google my gear is the greatest he was like triple h was like how do you look better than me i was like he got you a hookup he really really liked him brought him to wrestlemania for a tryout and he's been there ever since he he got he got called up to the main roster before me so i was like but i got signed but he's incredible it's so awesome yeah so i mean i suppose as well one of the you could say the I was going to say benefit, but I suppose one of the positives of this whole pandemic at the moment and you guys being almost based solely in Florida at the moment with the oh shows, is that, has that been great? No yeah. Not, not living out of a suitcase so much. You have no idea how much I think that has changed my career mm. for real. It has yeah. changed my career so much because I used to be on the road five or six days out of the week. And I'm not just talking about like in one state, I'm driving five to six hours to different states every single day. But we're not just talking about driving. I'm talking about flying as well right, early yeah. in the morning. And I'm not just talking about flying. And I'm talking about wrestling too, my brother. I am beating on my body. Now I am jumping into a car and I'm driving five hours, getting to the hotel at maybe like four in the morning. Hmm. They're like, uh, we gave up your room. You, you have like, it's four in the morning. I'm like, ah. They're like, check out at 10. I'm like, oh, let me sleep just a little bit, please. I need to sleep just a little bit. They're like, all right, sleep until 12. Don't answer the door, lock it. Be like, yeah. hey, room service, can you please come back? I need to sleep till 12. Working out, getting your food and doing the exact same thing. Right. Now that will beat up your body. And now you get to TV where it is crazy. And again, you don't know what's going to happen. Hmm. Vince can push you out there. You have no idea. You could yeah. have a 10 minute match, five minute match, nothing, a 20 minute segment. You have no idea. Then you go home, do your laundry and get on the road again. Yeah. Now, thankfully that I live in Florida, I'm so thankful. It is once a week. That's <laughs> easy then, yeah. Part time. Once a week. <laughs> no, I brilliant. feel like a part timer. It is, my body is, is, is like the best shape it's ever been. I'm sleeping so good. My match quality has just raised the roof up. 
I am like, I am like killing the game because my sleep, my working out, my eating, my training, my everything, mm. my energy, it's so incredible. The power yeah. of just like, whoa, slow down a little bit. Because I was doing pretty good before the pandemic. I was like trying to figure out a, a routine, a rhythm that was working for me and was like, you gotta, you gotta recover. You gotta do things. You gotta be the best. You gotta be an athlete. You gotta be an actress. You gotta be everything. But now I'm doing, I'm like feeling awesome. Yeah. yeah. And the champion as well. And the champion. And I'm the champion. I'm like, I'm with that. Exactly. But I before, mean, like, like during the summer, I was wrestling so much. They were, they were beating me down in the summer because during the pandemic, we were taping shows hmm. and we would do like two to three shows in like two days. And then I would do NXT and then, then Raw. Hmm. but now I'm like slow. I probably won't even slow down. Everything is getting crazy again. Oh my God. It's been nonstop. Um, but the wrestling is it's my body just feels awesome. Sure. Definitely. Brilliant. Well, you, you can definitely tell that you say, I, I wouldn't say your matches have got better because they've always been at a good standard. Oh, I know. I've always been top notch, exactly. I, but I but always, I always keep on getting like, how do I keep on getting better? So well, you're, like, I've always been good. in a cell that you, you were in the other week was out of this world. That was so good. So yeah. when like you're on about your, uh, you've now had time to train and like your fitness and everything. How is that when, like keeping your ring shape and all that kind of stuff? But actually, you're working the gym when you're when like, you've just gone through a match where you've been battered and bruised. Where's the motivation to then go to the gym the next day after driving five hours and all that kind of stuff till four a.m. The motivation is being on live national television. Mm-hmm. That's my motivation. My motivation is I want to make sure that after I'm done wrestling, that I'm still looking and feeling good. So I have to make sure that I take care of myself. Um, and if I'm really, really beat up, it will be a recovery day as like just sit in the sauna, yoga, stretching, just those things. But, you know, there's some days where, yes, I am beat up, but I also know that I just have to push it through so I can just keep on looking good because I'm about to be on TV and I have to be strong for my opponents and I have to have a strong neck and a strong back and strong arms because it is, you have to be strong. You have to take a lot of bumps. So it's also just for my own safety and making sure that I'm okay and my opponent's okay. And for my future, you know, working out every day, it's, it's just facts. It's science. It's, it's good for you. <laughs> Maybe not as extreme as I do it. You don't have to. Um, but just working out, it will make you feel so much better. It's, it's good for your mental health as well. Because there's some times that I will slag off because I can be really like, oh, hurt, tie up. Um, but once you like let loose a little bit, that can also like weigh off some of bad energy and bad, uh, you know, feeling like in a rut sometimes. It's good yeah, to definitely. let go of those toxins out of your, your body. So is there like, um, with you guys obviously resting now in, in Orlando, do you th- can you see it being a bit of a, well, I see it will be a big change, but do you think it would be slow steps to get back to on the road touring as opposed to doing, say, like, as you say, like five house shows a week and then a live TV? Do you think it'll go straight into that or is that into the unknown the, still? You have to talk to whoever does that side of the stuff. I have no idea. Sure. They bring it to me. I think about it. I think about how it fits my life. I go... <laughs> Okay, let me, yeah. let me figure that out mm. one day at a time because that's that's up to them. I'm sure they're trying to figure that all out. I'm not a CEO yet. <laughs> one, yeah, day yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. one day I will be. One day I will be a CEO of WWE. I'll, I'll, I'll be a shareholder. But until then, I have I don't have no idea. Um, one step at a time because who, I had no idea even about wrestling. I found out like the rest of you guys. I found out online that we were not going to have any fans, and I was like, I almost got mad. I was like, how dare them not tell us first (laughs) but i felt the sadness because it i was just like whoa Mm. that Mm. this is so real wow and it's scary but i'm here to bring hope and joy so i have to keep on performing and uh you know just letting people know it will be okay i'm i'm bringing hope i'm gonna bring that joy and um I felt the energy of WrestleMania, but man, was it different not having zero. You're, we're talking about 100,000 to zero. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> Zero in, in attendance. <laughs> um, millions watching all over the world, but zero in attendance. So I got to, you know, it was hard. <laughs> mm, mm. But that's when the true heart and soul comes in because you can either do this in front of nobody, a tree, by yourself in a mirror, or hundreds of thousands. What are you going to do? How are you going to perform? Is it going to be yeah. the same? 
you yeah. have to give it your all no matter what. So that's what I try to do for my fans and for the WWE universe because you know it's such a hard time right now. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, anyway, thank you. So this, uh, as you know, I think we told you, this is normal, not normal. So, what is the most normal thing about you? What is the most normal thing about me? Uh, the most normal thing about me is that I am so shy and nervous and scared and you know stutter my words and make mistakes like everybody else. <laughs> I feel like that's normal, right? <laughs> yep, <Yeah>. definitely. <laughs> so, exactly. So on the flip side of that, what would you say is the least normal thing? I would have to say my love for Asians <laughs> and Korean movies okay. and anime. Um, I love anime. I, I love different things. I am uniquely different. I always love the opposite of what people like. Sure. So, yeah, that's just why. I don't know. I just always like, if you like something, if, if it's a whole group is loving something, I'm like, nope, let me go try and like this thing. Sure. So that's how I'm always different. Thank you. Right. That's right. right. Um, I've also got something which I've now dubbed the 3 a.m. questions because the answers come at 3 a.m. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's a bit quick fire, but what is your favorite book? The Alchemist. What is your favorite song? Right now, say Kendrick Lamar, All Right. Uh, your favorite food? Ooh, so hard. Maybe pizza? Yep. Oh, oh another no, side I question. Don't. Is pineapple acceptable on a pizza? No. 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 Yes. Exactly. No, no. You're just disgusting. Exactly. You are disgusting. <laughs> I want to, I wanna, like, oh. punch those people. Like, what are... Oh, yeah, there's, yuck. There's one right here. Uh, he needs a slap, though. He's, he's, he's oh, been going oh, on I'll get him. I'll yeah. get you my bank statement. Yeah. Yuck. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite movie? Uh, there's so many new movies, and I feel like I always give the same answer, which is Old Boy, but I haven't seen that in years. So I don't even know. I need I need something to watch. Something else. And then from... Harry Potter? Yeah, I'd say that. i say that, yeah. Okay, yeah. let me try that. Uh, and um, what is your favorite quote from any TV or film? Um, Just any quote in life is, be so good they can't ignore you, and I am not afraid I was born to do this. I, that's not from a movie or whatever, but that's just a quote from something, and it's something that I just really, really love by it. Mm. No, fantastic. No, brilliant. Well, look, Mercedes, thank you so much for your time today. Really, really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, it's keep happening. on keep on being fantastic. Thank yeah, you so thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Well, again, thank you very much for joining us, Mercedes. And thank you very much for entertaining everybody, especially during this whole crazy time. Again, thank you so much for your time. It really, really means a lot to us. And next time you guys are over in the UK, we'll happily take you and your husband out for a meal to say thank you. Oh, that'd be so awesome. He loves food. Good. <laughs> you have to take you, you have to take me somewhere good because every place in the UK, you guys have no seasoning. Season, uh, well, it depends you have no flavor. flavor. No, I, I agree with that yeah. because I always. You guys come, have to take me somewhere. Whenever good. I come back from the US, I'm always loaded with seasons from <laughs> different places. Oh, good. <laughs> no, really. Right, so, well, thank you guys for having me. How good was that? I really did enjoy that interview. That was so good. And can I share, can I, so the shoes that Sarah and Mercedes were talking about, I got a little Christmas gift. I like how you got one. So they actually sent me these amazing shoes. I mean, they're, they are cool. So really cool. Together, like they were saying, we are strong. And then you've got Boston and Detroit that side. Amazing. Thank you very much for thinking of me. I'm very, very flattered that I can fit my clown feet into these. So thank you very much. I'll be wearing them with pride. And again, congratulations, guys, on all the hard work that you've done for raising some amazing money for that great charities. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that was that was the great thing about chatting to Mercedes, that it was so much more than just her character or outside or talking to her outside of her character, because I remember seeing an interview with her in character as Sasha Banks. And I remember thinking, Oh, I hope she's not in character because this could be <laughs> this could be a long interview if if so if that's the way. But no, it was, it was absolutely fantastic, and also just learning about how she got the call to be in the Mandalorian, I thought was really really fun. Um, the fact that she was on an off day on the way to the beach and suddenly right get myself sorted to do that, and then also I suppose just like learning on the job as well in terms of like being on the film set and what learning from people doing their craft well. And I think he's that, and that's just another string to her bow as well, and just shows what a very powerful and very determined woman she is. Very much an incredible person to speak to. Um, again, we cannot thank Mercedes and Sarath and everybody involved for helping make this interview happen. So thank you so much, guys, for being a part of it. 
Yes, yes. But I think one thing as well, which is probably one of my favorite quotes that you've had from your 3 a.m. questions that you've asked. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the best ones I think I've heard uh, what Mercedes did say, which was be so good that they can't ignore you. And I would echo that to everybody watching right now. And if that means putting a photo of yourself on your wall in a big poster like Oliver has done, you do that. You're on it as well. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you, what you want about. So for those listening and not watching, Oliver in the background of his shot right now in his office has the a poster. It's not an, it's not an office. It's my golf room. Has did I tell you I've got a golf simulator? Room? Yes, you did tell us. Okay, 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 golf. Okay, okay. Oliver has a photo. Oh, I'm sorry, a movie poster of Oliver and myself in the Harry Potter Seven Part Two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's egotistical. Are but... you telling me you wouldn't do it? Well, obviously, you I haven't, haven't done, done it. it I have I one thing in my whole house of Harry Potter. On Which is show. what? Which is what? Ready? Go on. <laughs> oh, gosh. I have me in cool, pop but... form. Yeah, I've got, I've got one of those. Oh, I bet you hang have. On. I bet you have. Hang on, hang on. Whole collection, so, you? so, so, have you not made your Diagon Alley Wheezes with Wheezes Lego? I have. I have. Right, and is it's that not showing you? It is not. No. Why? Because it's so big. Right. Shall I just get? Okay. Let me show you what else I've got on display. I've got my head, which was when George lost his ear, which is on display, which changes hats every now and then. Uh, yeah. What else have I got on display? That's about it, really. You know. Oh, and also George's ear. George's missing ear. That's on if you could, well, you would have frame. a mannequin with your costumes on them in that room. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. They just get in the way. Mm. I've only got a few things which come out every now and then. But yeah, nothing really Potter related, to be honest with you. Apart so I've been putting a photo of yourself on the wall. Are you telling me there's anything wrong with that? No, no, no. What's the room. difference between this and the photos of you in the background? Because I put some photos of me here, um, which needs to go up. I've got a, I've actually got a little flyer from uh, a play I did that's on the wall as well. I've got, yeah, you. yeah. other than that, there's just photos around the house of, of me doing stuff. Yeah, very good. What's wrong with that? Nothing, nothing, it's your room. You can do exactly what you want with it. Exactly, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what else there is it's down here right now. <sighs> Hello! Yes, so this drum, brings me so much joy because I find anyone not able to just like see so much joy from it. So a lot of people have been asking me about the uh, the drum from Japan. So I thought I'd give you a little backstory about the day I bought it. Do you remember when we bought it? When I bought I it? I do remember. We were, in a, we were in a music shop in Tokyo and I saw a very limited edition Gibson Les Paul. I played the guitar, so I went and got said guitar. Mm -hmm. Oliver, mm -hmm. however, turns around and produces this drum. Look there. Look at that the fine detail. Can I tell the ironic stuff. story? Can I tell the ironic thing with that, though? What? How it cost you more to get it back in import tax than it did to buy the thing. <laughs> Shh, I never paid. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry, Mr. Officer. I had this in my luggage when I went. <laughs> Come on, you're telling me you've never done that ever with anything. But I remember when we were in there, um, I'm a bit like my father in a way that I like to haggle or try and get some free stuff when you're buying something like this. And James was off playing this guitar. And I'm speaking to the, the chap who's selling the, the drum, the lovely Japanese drum. <laughs> and I remember saying to him, well, can I, have you got anything that would help me hit, play it better? And I remember John was with us, John San. And he wanted a harmonica, which was on the side. It was like this little like, 60 cent harmonica, which the guy threw in for free. Very nice of him. And then he also had these CDs of all these people playing the drums. And I was like, oh, yes, I could do with that. That would really help because he was teaching me how, you know, obviously you hit there for one, then you. Well, it's like, not rocket science. So, you don't need a CD. Well, he was, saying, he was saying to me, that that's how you do it. And I remember saying to him in, in, in a bit of jest, I said to him, oh, great. Is this their greatest hits album? Yes, they hit it great. And, it, you know, you know, and the joke just falls flat and it's lost. Mm. Um, that's one thing I remember from that one. So anyway, this is what I've got in my room right now. And it is better than any, any poster right now. This is, this is it. So, yeah. Very good. Did you know that? Speaking of, 
very annoying. Right, well, speaking of did you knows, I think it's time for some did you knows right now. Shall I put it down for you? Please, please do. Okay. Out the until, window would be good. Until, until next time. Different tone. Can you see how it's different tone from up there to uh, down here? Right. Anyway. My, so, my did you knows today. I'm going to bring them around. So, first of all, I thought there'd be a couple wrestling related did you knows. Okay. So, did you know that the biggest ever wrestling event in attendant for people attending, do you know what country it was in? Uh, think professional mm -hmm. wrestling, think, think the height, like, well, you know, you, where, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, uh, the United States of America. Oh, you'd be. I can't understand why you went there, but no, you're wrong. The country which has had the highest attended wrestling event of all time is actually North Korea. That's right. Of course, over, of course. Over 300,000 people attended the two-day event, which was called Collision in Korea, which was headlined by Antonio Inoka and the nature boy, Ric Flair. Woo! There you go. There's a good one. And then... You know that I said that I could... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You can't just drop that in there. So when was this then? In the 90s. In the 90s, big, right, OK. Big North Korean show. There you go. Did you know that? Right. Another did you know fact, which I quite enjoyed knowing this one anyway. But So you know that I got into boxing last year as well. I've been doing sparring. I actually put in a, a good punch bag in my garage um, so I can carry on doing it during lockdown. But okay. the greatest boxer of all time, Muhammad Ali, he was once doing a radio show and in there with him was a wrestler called Gorgeous George. And as soon as the red light for the live, we're live on air went on, Gorgeous George turned into the biggest bad guy you could ever meet. He was absolutely horrible. Uh, Muhammad Ali saw this and he realized that this guy knows how to make money in regards to everyone wants to see him lose. So people will buy tickets to see him lose. So. That gave Muhammad Ali the idea to go very big, very outlandish with things he was saying about his opponents and mm. pretty much given him the, well, he already had the nickname, but it definitely emphasized the Louisville lip. So maybe if he hadn't have had that chance meeting with the wrestler, he wouldn't have ever gone on to proclaim to everybody, I am the greatest. Well, also as well, if you think about, say, when he was fighting George Foreman, the whole builder to that fight, Ali was pretty much the bad guy. He and was the heel, to watch. as they say. Yeah, he was. He was the and it heel, pretty much goes say. on to even now modern. I mean, a lot of uh, boxers try that, especially now today. Look at Floyd Mayweather. Everyone eventually was just buying fights to see him lose, which of course they never did. My next, <laughs> I guess that could be a did you know fact, but another did you know? What's one thing you can't do? Well, if you're talking, if you're trying yes. to be a good, uh, say, if Muhammad, Muhammad Ali would not be able to talk if he had the hiccups. And if you had the hiccups, do you know they usually last for five minutes? Okay. What and what causes the hiccups? Uh, a, a variety of things. Okay. okay. Did you know the lifespan of a housefly is between 10 to 25 days? Oh, bloody things. It always seems so, like they're around a lot longer than that, though. Well, if you think the about time, that, if the times you walk around the front room... If, you like if your lifespan is between 10 and 25 days and they're stuck against that window, open the window for them because they haven't got long. Let them see the world. They don't want to be banging against that window saying, let me out, let me out. Shouldn't be in there in the first place. And going uh, again, sticking to time related things. Did you know Niagara Falls, you know, the big waterfall on the border of Canada and America? Yes, yes. It's yeah. the biggest waterfall in North America. Did you know? that it can fill 4,000 bathtubs every second. Wow. There you go. And that's Be chilly, my, wouldn't it? Be a chilly that bath. That is my did you knows for this week. Hey, well done. Well done. Thank you that very much. Very, but yes. Very good. Again, thank you very much for Mercedes for joining us today. Again, all of her big events are on the WWE Network and on, obviously, TV all over the world. She's also stars in The Mandalorian on Disney Plus right now, so please check that out if you can. And I've got to say, it was lovely to speak to her, especially out of character, but especially learn about how she got in the business, how she's getting on with the business right now and where she hopes to go in the future. 
Indeed. Indeed. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, guys, whatever it is you are getting up to this week, be it just relaxing at home, homeschooling. Um, we've had some amazing comments from people and all those are available on the audio version, which is now on the Friday. So if you're watching this on the Monday show, make sure you've got the Friday show. You confused yet, James? I'm very confused. Basically, make sure you keep sending us your did you knows, your jingles, your voicemails and questions, and we'll pick them up and share a few of them on our audio version of the podcast, which comes out every Friday. So the email for that is normal, not normal podcast at gmail.com. And we look forward to reading them and reading a few of them out there. We did. And also I must add as well that if you don't hear your jingle or anything we you sent in this week, be sure to tune in next because we will be diving back into that lovely deep pot of information and we'll be pulling some out, some absolute corkers out there as well. We will do. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for listening to our conversation with Mercedes this week. If you have enjoyed it, please give us a nice thumbs up or five star review or something like that. Oh, my God, I'm sounding like you, Oliver. I oh, know you well, do. Did you see Did you see as well? You know, you said your thing about negative clicks. Yeah. On YouTube. You're yeah. right. It happens within like the first minute of it going live. There's some sad troll who's there going. Eah. I reckon it's the raccoon negative. that tried to get into my tent. Yeah, bloody raccoon. You that's what I reckon. across the room the other day. Yeah. Well, he shouldn't be trying to get in my tent then, should he? You should. Maybe, well, ne next time you'll have to get him in the bank statement and see how, see how he gets on with that. I like what you did there. I like what you did there. Like guys, guys, thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Alexa, set my alarm to 3.30 in the morning. Alexa, copy all email address and send a smiley face to all send. Ooh, that's bad. That's bad. What's another one? What's another one we could do? Uh, uh, oh, Alexa. Subscribe to Normal Not Normal Podcast. Very good. Guys, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.